Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy and welcome to The Last Lap. In today's video we're going to be breaking down everything that happened from Watkins Glen this past weekend for NASCAR. But before we hop into it, just want to remind you guys to hit that like button and subscribe button. We greatly appreciate it if you did that. You can also check out our social media links in the description as always. But let's go ahead and hop into the video. Matthew, my friend and co-host, is joining me on the show as always. And based on the way he looks right now, it looks like, based on his reaction, you think Kyle Busch just won a race and like swept the weekend at Watkins Glen. But he didn't do that, so I have no idea why he's so happy right now. So Matthew, why don't you go ahead and explain to me and everybody else why you're so happy. Man. Yeah. You know why I'm happy. The best driver in Hendrick is back at victory lane again. After having some bad luck this summer, he is finally back in victory lane and he is ready to make another back-to-back -back championship run here. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing today? <laughs> how you doing? You, you doing good? I want, I want to make sure you're good because this is going to be a long video for you. So, you might as well just sit back. You might as well relax because you're going to hear all about it this tonight. <laughs> I, I still don't, I, I guess you're, are, are you a Kyle Larson fan now or something? I guess uh, maybe I need to get you like a Kyle Larson hat and a shirt and stuff. <laughs> I didn't know you jumped over to Hendrick Motorsports. So, I mean, if that's the case, like, you know, I'm happy for you. Like, I'm so glad Kyle hey. Larson won. Like, I didn't know you were a Kyle Larson fan. <laughs> and if you want to hop over to Hendrick Motorsports, I'll just say I congratulations. Mean, Kyle Bush takes over Bowman. If Kyle Busch takes over Bowman's run, then I would gladly get some Hendrick gear. But I doubt that's happening, so... Nope. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to say what Chase said. I'm just going to say congratulations on the win, because I didn't know you were a Kyle Larson fan. So. What? <laughs> um, but anyways, you guys probably already know what happened. We'll get into that in a little bit. I briefly want to touch on the Xfinity race, because there was some controversy at the end of that race as well. Uh, Kyle Larson ended up sweeping the weekend. He won the Xfinity race as well. After William Byron and Ty Gibbs, they got together in the bus stop. And William Byron obviously was not happy with Ty Gibbs. He uh, dumped him on the racetrack after the fact. And he went over there and talked to him. Nothing physical. They didn't throw punches or anything. But they did talk it out. And William Byron was clearly frustrated about it. Uh, but Kyle Larson did end up getting a win there. Uh, but hopping into the cup race, it was delayed because of... Uh, lightning it was delayed twice which I think they need to slightly adjust that rule it's like a 30 minute delay for every lightning strike they see and they saw it twice so I think they need to lower it just a little bit like 15 minutes or so but obviously we do want to keep the safety of the drivers in grandstands and people involved there uh, but they started all the race on rain rain tires and they started single file uh, Michael McDowell took the lead early in the race uh, drivers slowly started to transition to slick tires. It was about 10 laps in or so. Drivers slowly started coming down pit road, transitioning to those tires without the tread on them, and they quickly started picking up time on the track. The Hendrick Motorsports cars, they stayed out. They were pretty much the last drivers to pit because they were trying to do a two-stop strategy, whereas everybody else that came in to put the slick tires on early, they were trying to just get the tires as quick as they could to gain as much time. Um, but there were some incredible battles for track position coming off of pit road. Uh, I think like Chase Briscoe was one of the first ones to pit, and uh, drivers like Tyler Reddick were coming off pit road, AJ Allmendinger, uh, Chris Busher, a bunch of them were all fighting for position. Like right off of pit road, they would speed off pit road, slide right up in front of somebody else, and they would duke it out for a few laps. So really good racing. Uh, but Chase Briscoe would would end would win the first stage. And Chase Elliott would uh, clinch the regular season title as well. I'll get back to that a little bit later. Uh, and then after that, they did... Do... I will talk about that, actually, so thank you very much. But I'll save that for later. Anyways, uh, they did go back to double file restarts right after that, which is good. The rain cleared up, the track got dry, so we were able to go back to double file restarts. Uh, unfortunately, Todd Gilliland broke an axle. He was at the lead, in the lead at one point. After staying out and all kinds of pit strategy, he was running pretty well, ran, led a few laps. Wow, I can't talk today. Uh, but he led a few laps, uh, unfortunately broke an axle, tough break to his day. He was running very well. Logano and Kyle Busch, they cycled to the front of the field, and Joey Logano would win the second stage. Uh, and then Ross Chastain, once again, 
got into somebody else. This time it was Austin Dillon, and he ended up spinning around and unfortunately caught up uh, Ross Chastain's teammate, Kimi Raikkonen. He got off the track and ran into the wall. Tough end to Kimi Raikkonen's NASCAR debut. He was running in pretty much the top 15, top 20 all day. Hopefully he does consider coming back in the future. Uh, but after that, Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson cycled to the lead after green flag pit stops. And then the caution started to fall, as always. First off, it was Joey Hand. He backed into the wall in turn one, got into the tire barrier. I'm still a tiny bit questionable on why they threw that caution. I guess it was because they wanted to repair the tire wall, um, which, sure, now that that's a valid reason. But if, you know, they threw the caution for that, I respect it. And then after that, uh, the Hesman's car, he lost control and spun off in turn six in the gravel and got stuck. So that caused another caution to come out. And both of those restarts, it was Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott on the front row. The first time, Chase Elliott was able to get a pretty good launch off of turn one and get ahead of Kyle Larson. The second time, they drove it into turn one. Chase Elliott chose the outside again, and Kyle Larson locked up the right front tire and slid up into Chase Elliott. They both went wide. Both of them almost lost the lead, uh, but Kyle Larson was able to hang on and maintain the lead, and Chase Elliott fell back to fourth or something like that. Uh, Kyle Larson and AJ Allmendinger were fighting it out, just like they were in the Xfinity race the other day. Uh, but Kyle Larson was able to hang on, and he would sweep the weekend, and AJ Allmendinger would finish second both races in the weekend. So that was pretty cool how that ended up playing out. Uh, I will give my whole opinion on the Larson and Elliott contact after I go over the top 10. So, Kyle Larson finishes first, AJ Allmendinger second, like I said. Joe Logano finished third, Chase Elliott fourth. Daniel Suarez fifth. Daniel Suarez wasn't really mentioned today. He was, he, they had track house cars, weren't really up at the front dominating like we've seen in the past few road course races, but Daniel Suarez did manage to get a top five. Michael McDowell sixth. He was in contention pretty much all day long. I think he had probably a top three car right behind Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. Great run for Michael McDowell there, but he does need that win to clinch a spot into the playoffs. Tyler Reddick seventh. That was a Great run for him because I think early in the race he had to stop because he uh, missed the bus stop and then he got spun out, I believe, later on as well. So great comeback for him. Christopher Bell, eighth. Uh, the Toyotas, they struggled once again, but I'll get onto that in a second as well. Chris Buescher, ninth, and Eric Jones rounds out the top ten. So now is where I talk about, as a Chase Elliott fan, I talk about what happened on that final restart. So I probably already showed the clip of what happened. Kyle Larson clearly locked up his right front tire getting into the corner, ran up into Chase Elliott, and knocked him out of the way. This is the second time Kyle Larson has made contact with Chase Elliott to go on to win the race. So, as a Chase Elliott fan, I'm a little bit tired of it. It's the second time this has happened, and Kyle Larson's went on to win both times. But, you know... Chase Elliott, I would say right now, is one of, if not the, championship favorites. So, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to go on to next week, which apparently to Chase Elliott at Bristol's next week. So, I guess we're going to Bristol a few weeks early. So, I guess we'll get ready, go to Bristol, you know, the end of the round of 12 or whatever, and get the playoffs started, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's frustrating for sure. But, you know, what, what are we going to do? We can't do anything about it. Kyle Larson, you know, I, the only thing Chase Elliott could have done better, in my opinion, is choose the bottom, so Larson wouldn't have locked up his tire, but either way, you know, it's, what are you going to do? The race is over, so Kyle Larson got the win, great, good for him, congratulations, and we'll move on to next week, so, uh, you know, he's still a Hendrick Motorsports teammate, I still like Kyle Larson, just a tiny bit frustrated on being on the wrong end of the stick both times in those situations, but we have four wins this season. We're chilling. We still got a long way to go. We got the playoffs to worry about. And we'll we'll let the playoffs do the talking. We'll have a deep run into the playoffs and go from there. So that's all I got to say about that. Uh, as for the playoff picture, Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex Jr., they were around each other pretty much all day. But Ryan Blaney did go up 25 points total on Martin Truex Jr. now. And all the winners are locked in. So Kurt Busch is locked into the playoffs now. Because we, if we have a new winner next week, 
Uh, that would be 16 winners, and Kurt, obviously 16 drivers make the playoffs. So Kurt Busch is officially locked in, which is good, despite his struggles the past few weeks with the concussion-like symptoms. And the final story I want to mention is not really a surprise at this point, but the Toyotas struggled once again at the road courses. Uh, Christopher Bell finished eighth, which I mean I don't he was I don't really know where he was all day, but the Toyotas in general they struggled. None of them were really at the front. Kyle Busch was at one point. He had a really good restart, and he got up to second behind Joey Logano, and he, he was kind of chilling in second for a while, and then he fell off, had some bad pitch strategy, went to the back of the field, spun out, and Denny Hamlin was nowhere to be found today either. Neither was Martin Truex Jr. But Wallace had a suspension issue, and I don't even know what happened to Ty Gibbs. He finished, like, in the 20s or 30s today, so none of the Toyotas really had speed but that's the three stories I want to talk about, and that's it for me. So Matthew can go ahead and uh, talk about his favorite driver getting the win, I guess, and the whole Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson dispute. So Matthew, go ahead and uh, you can roast me all you want, but I'm past it. I'm ready to go on to next week at Bristol. So, yeah, go ahead and take it away. All right. It is my turn now, and I am about to unleash on everything you just said. All right. This Chase Elliott lost this race, and here's the reason why. Not once, but twice, he decided to choose the outside lane on the restart. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, why, why, why are you doing the outside lane? You realize you're in a vulnerable position when you do that. You could easily, you know, get pushed on the, pushed out to the outside, and. Fortunately, well, I wouldn't say fortunate. Well, fortunately for him, he was able to make that work on the first restart. But the second restart was when it, it did not work out for him. As Kyle Larson ended up uh, blowing that turn one. He Kyle Larson did blew the turn, but Elliott did put him in that did get put in that position by choosing the outside lane. I mean, if he chose the bottom lane, I don't think that would have happened. So. That's on Elliott right there. He gagged again on another road course. I mean, we saw him gag at Road America when he literally had everything going perfect for him. The perfect car. The perfect pit stops. And then out of nowhere, Tyler Reddick just basically embarrassed him, moving him out the way. And, man, I, I was shocked by that. I mean, man. Did he just pass Chase Elliott on a road course straight up like that? Are you kidding me? And then, and then for this race, everything was going right for him. Maybe not like Road America perfect, but he he was on his way to another win, and he didn't he didn't take the opportunity right during during the restarts. It doesn't matter if a caution came out or not. He has, he has to execute those restarts, right? And he did not choose the right lane. And he put himself in that position. So even his crew chief during the interview did not sound too confident about that. Like he knew, like he should have just, he should have chosen the bottom lane there. But, um, but yeah, this is a great opportunity for Larson here. Getting this win, perfect timing for the playoffs to start. Just like how Kevin Harvick, Basically, guy on fire the last couple weeks. You don't want to get the reigning Cup Series champion, the best driver in Hendrick Motorsports. They, you don't want to make him hot right now because he can win a lot of races. We all saw last year one of the best dominant seasons that I have ever seen. I mean, I I I still can't believe he won ten races, especially in the modern era. And I mean. We all know how these playoffs can be. I mean, some, especially with this new car, a lot of people come out of nowhere and start getting on fire. So this might be Larson's turn to get on fire here. So I cannot wait to see how Larson does during the playoffs, especially with this win, second win, which I think he needed because he has had a lot of bad luck, in my opinion. I mean, of course, the most notable incident this year was Indy when he somehow forgot to um, slow down the car, which I, that still confuses me that right. But yeah, um, overall, this was a really great race. This is kind of 
tied with Coda for me as the best road course of the year. I mean, we saw pretty much everything. Wet racing, dry racing, uh, crazy restarts, crazy strategy calls. And I thought this was a great race to watch. So, um, yeah. And then the whole, and then Lars, okay, Larson Elliott moving forward. Um, I don't think anything's going to happen. I mean, come on. They're, they're teammates. Oh, I, I should have said this. That's a teammate. When that, when that happened, <laughs> that, right? When that happened, I was shouting on my TV. That's a teammate. But, um, yeah, I don't, nothing's going to happen, of course. I mean, I know tomorrow morning in the meeting, it's not going to be a, a fun place to be, but they'll they'll work it out. I mean, they worked it out at Fontana, and they'll probably work it out before Daytona. Oh, wait, wait, is it Bristol? Oh, man. That's another that's another embarrassment by Chase Silly there. How, come on, man. Look. I I get the guy doesn't get mad that much, but come on, come on, man, you gotta work, you gotta work how you are when you're mad. Just ask Kyle Busch, but um, yeah, yeah, no, nothing's gonna happen. So no, I I think there's no worries with that camp, no no worries with the with that organization. They'll just move on and they'll compete each other for the playoffs. So yeah, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, I almost think that this Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson thing, it not yet. It won't. It's not there yet, but I think it could get to kind of like Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon, where they're like both really talented drivers, and they just get together on the track sometimes, and they just have to kind of buff things out and move on. So I feel like that's kind of where this might be going with Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott. I think we can both argue and agree that they're the two best drivers at Hendrick Motorsports. And, you know, sometimes one gets on a really hot streak and sometimes the other one gets on a really hot streak. And, you know, when they're both at the top of their game like they were at Watkins Glen, they both have pretty equal cars and they're going to get together sometimes. And that's just how it is. But, yeah, nothing's going to happen. The meeting tomorrow is not going to be pretty. But after that, I think they'll be fine. Because Daytona, you have to work with your teammates at Daytona for the most part. So I think... You know, that they'll get on the same page there, and then they'll go into the playoffs, their mind, their own business, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's just one of those things where teammates get together, and it's going to happen. We've seen it several times this year, not just with Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson, but a bunch of other drivers as well. That's just how the cr cookie crumbles. But uh, we'll go ahead and rate this race and uh, give our fantasy update and get on out of here. So, yeah, like you said, I thought this was a really good race. It had just about everything started with the wet weather, the tire, the rainy tires, quickly transitioning into the slick tires. That was a really cool transition to watch all the strategy there. The two and three stop strategy, that was cool to watch. There were a bunch of different drivers in the lead. We had like Todd Gillen in the lead at some point. We had the foreign drivers out there. Oh yeah, also I wanted to briefly talk about that. We had uh, seven drivers from seven different countries in this race. Uh, obviously the United States, we had Daniel Suarez from Mexico, the Hesemann's driver from the Netherlands, uh, Mike Rockenfeller from Germany, uh, Danielle Caveat, I hope I said that no, right. No, it's Danny Cleavat. Oh, well, there you go. Thank you for the Hey, I watched my Formula 1, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, he's from Russia, uh, we had Kimi Reckonen also from Finland, obviously, and we had Kyle Tilly from England, so... That was really cool. That was a record for the most drivers from different countries in a race. Really cool to see that. I hope we can see some of the drivers back again, especially Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, but anyways, as for rating the race, I will give it, I think I'll give it an 8 out of, no, no, no I'll give it 8.5. You know, I, I think it is second on the list for road courses this season right behind Coda. But yeah, I thought it was a great race overall. Matthew, we are going to rate this race from Watkins Glen. I'm going to give this race a 9 out of 10 for me. I thought I had everything. Wet racing, amazing strategy racing. It may not have, you know, a lot of cautions per se, but overall this was still a great race. I, it was really intense, especially the first two stages. I felt like the leaders were so close together. I, it was like crazy. So, But yeah, this was an amazing road course race. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Yeah, there might not have been a lot of cautions, but there were a lot of cautions right at the end of the race, and that screwed our chance of winning. So, 
<laughs> anyways, anyway, that's it. I'm done. I'm officially moving on to Bristol next week, so. Uh, uh, as for our fantasy update, that that is that is the one good thing that at least came out of today, besides Chase Elliott winning the regular season championship. Uh, I did do really good in fantasy this week. I got 230 points. You got 185, and I cut the lead from 29 points all the way back down to four. So I'm at 4,557 points. You're at 4,561. You have a four-point lead. That's the only good thing that came out today. That's all I got to say. Matthew, what are your final thoughts before we wrap it up? I can't wait for the comment section when this video gets long so all the Elliot fans attack me, and they'll, they'll support you. So... Looking forward to that part. <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, I'm I'm over it. I'm upset, but it is it's just a racing situation. Got to get through it. I have I'm mimicking Chase Elliott and just moving on to next week. So, <laughs> you mean the script that uh, you mean the script that Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gorn gave to him and memorized before the interview came, so he didn't start saying a bunch of cuss words on TV. <laughs> that that was a pretty funny video or pretty funny interview. Not gonna lie, he always does stuff like that in his uh, interviews when he's upset but anyways that's gonna wrap it up for this video we hope you all enjoyed it like matthew said we look forward to seeing your comments if you have thoughts and opinions about what happened chase elliott fan not chase elliott fan whatever um but yeah make sure you guys stay tuned make sure you check out our social media channels for updates but until next time we'll see you guys in our next video